What's up guys, Shane Stars here. Today we're gonna be taking a look at the ZTE Axon 40 Ultra. The standout feature here has to be the third generation under display camera, but can the rest of the phone hold up to this awesome and unique feature? Let's go ahead and get started. This video is sponsored by Simtech. The Simtech 5-in-1 case for the iPhone 13 Pro Max offers advanced protection for your cell phone. This 5-in-1 case includes a shock absorption PC frame, a TPU phone case, a phone lanyard, and two screen protectors. I personally love the look of this clear case. I love that it's kind of a minimalistic way of protecting your phone. The iPhone 13 Pro Max has such a great design. Why would you want to cover it up? Usually that's the main issue with cases is in order to protect your phone, you have to cover up their unique design. This provides military standard drop protection for protection of drops up to 13 feet. You won't have to worry about yellowing with this clear case thanks to the Germany Bayer environmentally friendly TPU materials, which are yellowing resistant. With everything that this case includes at the price point, I don't think you're gonna be able to beat this value. I think this is definitely a great way to protect your phone. I'll be sure to include links in the description. So the first thing that really stands out to me about this phone is the premium design. So we do have that dual curved edge display, which looks stunning. It is not broken up by a hole punch camera because we have that third generation under display camera, which in most cases, I can't even tell it's there. When I first took it out of the box, where is the camera sensor? You have to really take a good close look at it. You kind of have to look at it under a microscope. Uh, there are some instances where if you're looking at a gray or black background, you can see the sensor, but for the most part, everything you're looking at, you're not going to be distracted by that hole punch with a camera. I think that's a major plus. Also love the fact that it has this premium glass back design. It's kind of an etched back. It has a small bit of texture, um, but when you first look at it and you think it's going to be rough, it's still pretty slippery. I really do like this sparkly design that you can definitely catch in the reflection of the sun outdoors. It does have a beefy camera module with some very capable cameras there on the back as well. Overall, I think this is a very good looking flagship device. When it comes to the display, we get a 6.8 inch full HD AMOLED display with a peak brightness of 1500 nits. Now you're thinking full HD, that could be a drawback, but here I don't think it's really that big of an issue. I still think the display looks stunning. It still looks plenty sharp and it does get very bright, especially when you take it outdoors. Now I think that under display camera really helps with being immersed into the content that you're viewing. And I love the fact that the hole punch is eliminated, especially like when you're watching YouTube or Netflix uh, or things like that, or even playing video games. I love the fact that the under display camera is so well hidden. I think it's a big major benefit of this display. When it comes to battery life, this phone is rocking a 5,000 milliamp hour battery and it does support 65 watt fast charging. A uh, big plus here, the 65 watt fast charger does come with the phone in the box, which can't be said for other flagships on the market today. The 5,000 milliamp hour battery is going to be enough to get you through an entire day of use. You're going to be able to get up to seven hours of screen on time with a single charge. If you are able to run down this battery, you're gonna be able to fully charge this phone in under an hour. You're gonna be able to get up to 65% charge in just 20 minutes. So I think that's another great factor with this phone is that incredibly fast charging. When it comes to speed and performance, this phone does does have a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 processor. The version they sent me has eight gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. I thought there was enough RAM there that I could multitask to my level of multitasking. So for the most part, it was able to keep applications open in the background. I wasn't having to wait on those to reload from scratch. I loved it scrolling through my Twitter feed on this 120 Hertz display. I thought that felt nice and smooth. And even going from screen to screen or from app to app, I felt like transitions there were buttery smooth and this phone overall performs very well. When it comes to gaming, I didn't have any issues gaming with Call of Duty Mobile or PUBG or even Need for Speed. And of course, lower end games didn't have any issues there either. Um, Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 processors usually overheat, but even with extended periods of gaming, I didn't notice a lot of overheating with this phone. However, if you take it outside in the middle of the day and you start shooting some photography, I did notice a little bit of overheating there. Um, so 
Just from my experience, this phone is an awesome performer. When it comes to photography, this phone does an incredible job. So it has a 64 megapixel main shooter. That telephoto lens is equivalent to about three by zoom. And you're gonna be able to get really good zoom on even up to five by images. Going any further than that, you are going to get a little bit of washout. Uh, you're gonna get some blurriness. Photos look less sharp, but you can zoom up to 40 by digital zoom, which you may find that's useful in certain scenarios. For me, I like that I'm still able to use the three by four by and five by zooms. Those are actually still usable photos. The main camera lens takes really good shots outdoors and even in some low light situations as well. And that ultra wide camera is also a very capable camera. And when we're talking about the camera, I have to mention that that under display camera it just doesn't take really great shots. So when you compare it to another flagship like the Galaxy S22 Ultra, the differences are very apparent. You're gonna get kind of a smudged look from the images coming out of that selfie camera on the ZTE Axon 40 Ultra. That being said, you have to kind of weigh the benefits. Do you prefer having an under display camera with an unimpeded uh, display or do you prefer having really good selfie photos if you take a lot of selfies maybe you want to go with another phone if you don't take a lot of selfies this is still a very good flagship device if you're into you know under display cameras the zte axon 40 ultra doesn't have an ip rating for waterproofness and it doesn't have wireless charging those are some things that you may want to consider when looking at spending 800 dollars on a phone as there are plenty of other phones on the market that have better cameras overall and have those other features built in for the same price or less so you may really want to consider all your options but i still think that this phone is a very good performer and if you're really interested in new technologies like the under display camera this may be the phone for you that about wraps it up for this video guys thanks for watching be blessed i'll see you in the next one